Do you find it hard to focus and stay productive when you're studying? One of the best ways to improve your grades is to learn how to focus effectively, as even if you're using the best evidence-based learning techniques like Active Recall, if you're not focused when studying, you won't score those top grades. In today's video, I'm gonna cover 20 evidence-based tips which you might not have heard of to help you concentrate while you're studying. So focus on hitting that subscribe button and let's get going. Now, I'm slightly obsessed with having a tidy, minimalist workspace because it helps me to get more work done. Researchers at Princeton University Neuroscience Institute found that our brains are able to process information more effectively in an uncluttered environment. If your study area is messy, try to take a leaf out of Marie Kondo's excellent book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and tidy things up so that you have the essentials laid out on your desk and nothing else. Having things neat and tidy has a calming effect on your mind and it will also help you to focus and concentrate when studying. Ever get stuck procrastinating and then and feeling guilty that you're not studying at all? A lot of people think procrastination is a time management issue, reflecting laziness or a lack of motivation, but it's actually none of those things. Research tells us that the cause of procrastination isn't issues of self-regulation, instead it's actually linked to our emotional regulation. You'll make excuses and procrastinate when there's a risk that you might fail at something, where you're scared of the difficulty, or if you're uncertain about how things might turn out. You might even be expending all of your energy doing other things. So when it comes to actually doing the things you need to do, you have no willpower left at all. This is something called decision fatigue. So before you assume you need better time management skills, see if you can solve the emotional foundation of your procrastination first by asking yourself things like, why am I actually avoiding this? What am I afraid of? And if you do lose focus or procrastinate, set a minute on a timer and tell yourself you'll start working when that minute's up. This is called an implementation intention and it makes it easier to get started at something as you're signaling the attention to start to your brain. This will eliminate the resistance resistance you're experiencing and reduces the time your brain has to think about reasons you should avoid starting altogether. Deep breathing exercises increase the ability of our brains to focus. Researchers at the Trinity College Institute of Neuroscience have studied the effect of breathing exercises on the body's production of noradrenaline. Noradrenaline functions as a neurotransmitter which affects our abilities to concentrate. By regulating your breathing, you can optimize your levels of noradrenaline. The researchers concluded that there's a strong connection between breath-centered practice and a steadiness of mind. So Take a breath in for four seconds, hold it for two, and breathe out for six before studying to increase your focus. Apps like Shiken actually integrate breathing and mindfulness exercises into how they work, with breathing exercises popping up after you've worked through some active recall questions to help you learn more effectively and to stay calm around anxious exam revision periods. Now, there's strong evidence that mindfulness can help reduce stress, improve attention, reduce distractions, and improve memory and academic performance. A randomized control trial done in 2013 by the Department of Psychiatry at Mass Gen Hospital found that mindfulness can help to reduce stress and anxiety, and a 2018 study by the same researchers found that mindfulness practice can actually reduce stress hormones released by the body. Mindfulness has been shown to have positive benefits on attention in a number of studies too. A leading study from the University of California in 2010 examined those who practice mindfulness over a three-month retreat. The study showed that while normal people's attention declines over the course of a task, this effect had virtually gone away after one and a half months of intense mindfulness practice. Another effect fact that's been studied is the tendency to get distracted. A study by Mrazek et al. in 2012 observed that just eight minutes of mindful breathing reduced behavioral initiators of mind wandering when participants were given a very, very boring task. The authors of the research hypothesized that mindfulness practice helped to reduce outside thoughts creeping in and helps you to become more aware of distractions when they do occur so that you can quickly identify them and then get back to the task at hand. So if you're struggling, practice mindfulness, take a moment to control your breath and and meditate. Recording yourself studying or watching other people study may sound strange, but it definitely works. Whether you're watching a study with me stream on YouTube or you're streaming your own study session, the idea is to create social accountability. There are loads and loads of great Discord servers, Reddit communities, and websites like Studyverse, which offer virtual study rooms where knowing that you're being watched will hopefully keep you focused on your work and study. If you're a little bit more private and don't want to stream yourself, just watching study with me's can help you to improve focus and help 
help bring some structure to your study time. The timers on screen improve time tracking and time management, and the personal quiet atmosphere gives you the impression of studying with a friend for social accountability. If someone else is studying, so can you. And you can also check out websites like Focusmate, where you get paired with an actual accountability buddy, and then you both hop into a live session and spend 50 minutes focusing on studying. A Harvard Business Study found that about 3% of graduates in their MBA who had their goals written down ended up earning 10 times as much as the other 97% put together. Rather than setting time-based goals and assigning time to simply reading chapters of books, set mastery-based goals that are based on the number of active recall questions that you'll complete. I usually work out how long it takes me to do practice questions and then map into my study timetable the time it takes to complete a certain amount of questions each day at a similar time to build habits and make learning into a game. I'll then allocate time to read around topics to ensure I understand facts and can apply the topics. Apps like Duolingo and Chican allow you to set mastery-based goals and regular time to study, complete with reminders to keep you on track and help you to stay focused when studying in a fun way. Studying at the same time each day helps you to build habits and to stay consistent. Your brain will get used to studying at a set time of day and focusing will become easier. I'm a huge fan of time blocking out work and study sessions and putting these into my calendar and diary. I'll also add in time for breaks. This forms part of how you should plan a study session altogether. While it's great creating a study plan in Excel, the process of actually adding in study times and sessions into your calendar makes planning a much more practical process. Now, if you're not a fan of calendars, I used to just set myself a regular study time where I committed to get down to work every single day. For me, this tends to be in the mornings when I have most energy and I'm free for any distractions. As the day progresses, I find that I gradually tire, so I try and get my main work done in the morning, kicking things off at 7 a.m. sat at my desk. Having a clear idea of why you want to study in the first place is a great way to stay focused when studying. You can do this the night before a study session, or you can write out your purpose when you start revising for a specific exam or you start a new school term. You might want to write out something like, I'm sitting medical finals because I want to become a doctor, or I'm going to master Spanish so that I can speak fluently when I visit Spain. Try and be as specific and personal as possible. So why does this help? Well, by setting an overall objective or purpose, you're making the process of studying much more personal and relevant to you. This then makes it way more likely that you'll focus as you know it's important rather than just studying for the sake of studying. When you're deep into a revision period around exam times, for example, it can be easy to lose focus and motivation as we're heads down working and we actually forget why we're working in the first place. So coming back to that written purpose statement reminds us to focus on what's important and focus back on studying. Now you can't always control the result, but you can always control the process. While getting a specific grade or test score can never be 100% guaranteed, showing up and doing a set number of practice questions every day is completely within your control and is achievable. By rewarding yourself for just showing up and committing to the process of studying, you're actually training your brain to enjoy studying and helping to build a habit through positive reinforcement. If you focus on a specific outcome, this is likely to be way off in the future and this can lead to lack of motivation and lack of focus. If on the other hand, you celebrate the process you commit to every day, you're staying more in the present moment and building daily momentum, which then adds up over time. So focus on the process of studying rather than on any outcomes in the future and celebrate just showing up. Researchers at Cornell University found some interesting results when office temperatures were raised from 20 to 25 degrees Celsius or 68 to 77 Fahrenheit. Typing errors fell by 44% and output increased by over 150%. The research showed that the temperature most conducive for working and studying is in the range of 22 to 25 Celsius or 72 to 77 Fahrenheit. You're not distracted by the cold and you're not too warm either. So if you can change the temperature of the place that you're studying, make sure it stays within that range. Did you know that a 2017 study found that the mere presence of your mobile phone near where you're studying reduces available cognitive capacity? If you're trying to focus on studying or work and you leave your phone on your desk, or even if it's in your pocket and on silent, it'll reduce your working memory and negatively impact your performance. To really remove any distraction or even thinking about your phone, researchers suggest leaving it in another room entirely, as the effort of then having to get up and get it is way more difficult than just having it in your pocket. Like James Clear says in Atomic Habits, we want to make good habits easy and bad habits difficult. Do you study in your bed? Studying in your bed is bad for two reasons. Firstly, we associate our beds with sleep and relaxation, and it can be easy to become distracted or feel sleepy if you're studying from your bed. Secondly, if we study on our laptops and phones in bed, it can mean we disrupt our sleep cycle. Exposure to light suppresses the secretion of melatonin, a hormone that influences our circadian rhythms. Even dim light can interfere with a person's circadian rhythm and melatonin secretion. While light of any kind can suppress the secretion of melatonin, blue light at night does so more powerfully. 
Harvard researchers and their colleagues conducted an experiment comparing the effects of six and a half hours of exposure to blue light to exposure to green light of comparable brightness. The blue light spectrum suppressed melatonin about twice as long as the green light and shifted the circadian rhythms by twice as much. Listening to classical music has been shown to help you focus when studying. According to a 2007 study from Stanford, classical music can help your brain absorb and interpret new information much more easily. Your brain processes the information it receives from the world around you by separating it into smaller segments. The researchers found evidence to suggest that music can engage your brain in such a way that it trains it to pay better attention to events and make predictions about what might happen. So how does this help you study? Well, if you struggle to make sense of new material, listening to music could help this process become much easier. Now, staying productive isn't all about hustle culture. As James Clear outlines in Atomic Habits, systems and processes help you to build effective habits. Good systems make it easy to complete a task as they organize the required information and then make it easy to edit and do something with that information with as little effort as possible. For studying, systems like having a study routine, planning out your timetable in Notion or in your calendar, and spending time planning what and how you're actually going to study is a really important use of your time and it isn't talked about enough. I'd also add in spending time learning how to learn by reading books like Make It Stick as part of your system. These investments of your time before you begin studying will help you to stay focused and keep you productive. Hopefully this video and channel are helping you build up your own study system and I've also linked in our spacing schedule and a free Notion template in the comments below. If the first thing you do when you wake up is to check your phone, you might be completely ruining your day. When you first wake up, your brain switches from delta waves, which is what happens during deep sleep, to theta waves, which is a much more focused and active state, but which is much more malleable. When you check your phone first thing, whether looking at Instagram, checking emails, or reading the news, you're actually skipping this theta state altogether and going straight into your body's alert mode. If you read the news first thing and come across something negative, you could actually trigger your body's stress mode, which puts you on edge for the whole day and causes you to lose focus. Instead of checking your phone, try going straight to your desk and getting down to studying. Research in 2015 from the Journal of the Acoustic Society of America found that using natural sounds like a flowing stream was an effective way to improve employees' productivity and moods in the workplace. One small experiment with 40 people found lower stress levels among those who listened to nature sounds compared to silence or using classical music. If reducing stress improves productivity, then listening to nature sounds could help boost your work rate and your study. Lo-fi music helps you to focus too. A research paper in the Journal of the International Association for the Study of Popular Music concluded that the emotional connection listeners made with lo-fi music evokes a nostalgia combined with the repetitive, soft anime visuals that feature on YouTube channels and it likely causes a calming effect and helps you to study better. Want to learn a brain hack to help you study? Our brains are actually hardwired not to leave things unfinished. And this is called the Zygarnik effect. It's the tendency for incomplete tasks to be better remembered than time tasks which have been completed. Once you invest time and energy into something, you'll feel completely compelled to actually finish it. So how can you use this to focus when studying? Well, when planning out your study session the night before, try actually starting to study and then stop. By doing just a few questions or reading a few paragraphs of text and then leaving it unfinished, you'll wake up focused on picking up where you left off. And as an added bonus, your books will be left open on your desk for the following day. Now, multitasking is one of those myths where the research shows that juggling too many tasks at the same time actually makes you less productive and effective, not more efficient as many people are led to believe. And this makes sense, right? If we're not focused on studying, our brains won't filter the information and we're increasing the extraneous cognitive load by filling our brains with unnecessary information and tasks. If you're studying, you can't be doing anything else. So block out dedicated study session time. Ever felt like you're just in the zone when you're working on something? This is known as a flow state where the task you're working on is enjoyable and you're laser focused on it. But how can you get into a flow state when you're you're studying. Well, you can make studying easy to get into a flow state by removing any barriers and ensuring that you know a couple of things. You need to know what to do next. You need to know how you're going to do it. You need to be free from distractions. You need to have clear and immediate feedback on what you're learning. And you must feel a balance between the challenge and your own skill. A great way to do this is to set external reminders to study for a set period of time at the same time each day. And having your study area prepared and laid out and the topics you'll be studying and the method for studying prepared the night before means that you can immediately 
really dive into studying and you know where to pick up with minimal resistance. You should plan to use active recall and testing to receive immediate feedback and plan topics that you've not yet mastered and set realistic goals that challenge you for the study session, such as applying the actual knowledge. Here's one focus and productivity tip I don't see talked about enough, and that's to make what we're working on fun. Because if you're not enjoying the process or you're not learning, then what's the point? Now, if you're studying for an exam, this might not sound like the most fun thing you could be doing with your time, but there are a few tricks to help you switch up and see that study sessions can be fun. Firstly, you want to switch up your mindset so that you treat learning like a fun quiz or a game. There are lots of apps out there like Duolingo or Kahoot or Shikan that gamify the learning experience, and whether you get a question correct or incorrect, it should be a fun process where you're growing and you're seeing improvement rather than studying being a chore. Secondly, you need to make sure you're enjoying the actual content that you're learning and you're finding an emotional connection to make it relevant and interesting to you so that you want to learn more. A great hack here is to Google the topic and look through images and news articles for things that might interest you and which you might then get excited about. For example, if you're learning about lupus in medicine, did you know that Selena Gomez was diagnosed with it? A quick Google search lends a more personal story to the disease you're learning and makes the whole topic much more interesting and relatable. You can use this method to make any hard topic easy to learn and interesting to keep you focused. Staying focused while studying is something that everybody struggles with. I've got a great bunch of videos that dive deeper into some of the concepts we've touched on today. In particular, how we can reduce the cognitive load on our brains so that our working memory is freed up to learn and we can stay focused for longer. So be sure to check those out in the end cards. Thanks so much for watching. Do hit that subscribe button and that like button if you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you again next time.